Oh no. Pavel has some ugly looking wings, it seems really- I mean, he got shot with a shotgun at point blank range, so, I mean, he's severely wounded. <laughs> God, this is so bad. I've made some really terrible decisions. I'm badly wounded. I don't think I can make it through unless my friends get some bandages. Okay, you have a bandage. You're okay. Um, we managed to fend off the attack, but what if the next one is stronger? Okay, shut up. How will I make it through unless we dress that wound? We need bandages. Oh, we are just like so screwed. This just went from bad to worse so quickly. That's not even funny. We didn't even pick anything up, did we? We we got no we got nothing. I don't even know what to do at this point. We're hungry. We're just gonna have to eat this food straight from here. Anton's ridiculously hungry, and he's sick. What's the radio have to say? Death takes its toll in Pogorin. Sniper fire, mortar shells, and cold temperatures are the cause of deaths of many civilians. The spokesman for the military said civilian casualties are the result of tragic accidents and criminal activity within the city. Due to recent shortages, the prices of cigarettes and tobacco have become exceedingly high. Many people need cigarettes to calm down, but how can they be calm knowing how much they must pay for them? A little bit like real life there. It was a little bit close to home there, wasn't it? Temperatures are still very low. In besieged Bogoran, firewood is getting harder to come by and people are gathering anything that can be burned. What's this? I'm worried about Pavel. What was that little speech bubbaloo there? Is he gonna go and talk to him? I've never seen that before. Is that new? Oh. So it's okay. We're gonna get through this. My power also to bother you. Oh. But you can't just sit there and cry. I can too just sit here and cry. <laughs> That's none of your business. Oh, that's so adorable. You guys are so sweet. I didn't know. I mean, I probably would just sit there and cry as well if I'd just been to my, not friends, but like, you know, one of my friends had just been killed in cold blood. The other one went to avenge her, also got killed in cold blood. I went to go and, you know, try and just desperate, ended up open firing on some poor man who just was just minding his own business shot me with a shotgun and now i'm like in bed severely injured with a sick old man and it's just two of us i would probably just sit there and cry too i feel like i've created a really terrible situation for pavel if this was just pavel's story just told from his perspective it would just be the the saddest story i don't know what we're gonna do now because Neither of them can go out and scavenge because one's too sick and one's too injured. I don't know. What do we do? I mean, we've got to see this through to the end, but honestly, I, I am just sort of thinking, I just want to start again because I've learned a lot with this playthrough and I feel like I just want to start again and do it like, quote, properly. But at the same time, I'm sort of invested. We've come this far. I feel like we need to see it through to the end. I mean, we might make it through the winter, I'm not very confident in that statement, but it's possible. <laughs> I don't know, what, what do we do? I mean, do we send out Anton to go and trade or something? Do we even have anything to trade? Hmm. I mean, we could probably trade like coffee. I don't know. I'm just going to end the day. I don't really know what else to do. Um. So I'm going to send Anton, oh but he's only got eight slots. Maybe that's okay, because I, I, what I was thinking is that we go to the military outpost to trade. Where was the other place we could trade? Oh, it was here, wasn't it? But we can't get there. What do we need? We need parts. We need parts and we need food. They'll trade for alcohol and cigarettes. 
but careful, you never know what to expect from them. Plenty of goods and they're eager to trade. <laughs> Let's just go there. I mean, we've got nothing to lose at this point, really. We... Let's take some lockpicks. Let's take all the coffee because Katya's not here now, so she doesn't need it. Let's take like... No, let's just take 10 sugar. I don't want to use up too many slots. And we'll take take one of those meds. Because Anton needs them currently, so... I really hope we can trade. I just realised I've sent the, the celibate man. It's my first time in this kind of place. Yeah, like, the, we've sent the celibate man to go and <laughs> trade at a brothel. <laughs> Probably not my smartest move. And again, we've not been making many of those lately, have we? Can we... It won't open. It's trash mostly. Among it lie a fashionable handbag, torn as if someone had ripped it open, not sparing any thought to a damaged zipper. A tiny framed photo of a young man and a pocket notebook. Whoever tossed these here wasn't their owner. This place is pretty big. Nothing here. potentially in here. Yeah. Okay, we could trade with this person. Good. He's carrying three wood in one slot. Or are we just seeing it amalgamated? Because we're looking at our things, I think that's why. Okay. Alright. Um, let's see. Okay, I mean, you've got. I'll take all of those, all the fuel. I'll take all your water and I'll take your bandages. Bandages are very valuable. Damn. I mean, it's the only way we can keep Pavel alive, so. Oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna leave. Um. I don't want to antagonise anyone here and then lose Anton as well when he has a bandage for Pavel. No offence to Anton, but Pavel's the only person I actually care about at this point. So. At least he has a bandage now.